In this video, we're going to look at what are the evidence that supports the continental drift theory. In case you haven't watched the video on the continental drift theory, please do so. The link is in the description and you'll get some context as to what we are going to talk in this video. So in total, there are five points that provides a strong evidence that the continental drift theory is real. The first evidence says the matching of continents, that is the jigsaw fit. You know what is a jigsaw puzzle, right? A big picture is cut into various pieces of different shapes that have to be fitted together. Similarly, if you look at the shorelines of Africa and South America facing each other, and if I bring them together, they are a good match. This fit of the Atlantic margin was presented by Edward Bullard in 1964. So this forms the first evidence in support of the continental drift theory. The second evidence shows the rocks of same age across the oceans. Scientists around the globe have tested rocks at various places by a method called radiometric dating. Radiometric dating is a technique used to date materials such as rocks or carbon. So after using this technique, they came to a conclusion that all the rocks from different continents have a correlation. For example, the belt of ancient rocks of 2000 million years from Brazil coast matches with those from Western Africa. Then it also suggests that the marine deposits in the region is from the Jurassic era. Jurassic era is the second phase of Mesozoic era, where the reptiles rule the continents. And this forms the second evidence in support of the continental drift theory. The third evidence is Tillite. Tillite is the sedimentary rock formed out of deposits of glaciers. Mostly you'll find them in colder regions. They look something like this. So the Gondwana land, which is the southern part of the initial Pangae landmass, is known to have broken into six different landmasses. They are Africa, Falkland Island, Madagascar, India, Antarctica, and Australia. Now at the base of all these landmasses, tillite have been found, which proves the fact that all these six landmasses have similar histories. Since it is not possible to go back in time to see what climates were like, scientists use imprints like these that are created during past climate to come to a conclusion that continents are really drifting away. Oh, by the way, just a quick info, Paleoclimatology is the study of past climates. Therefore, delights forms the third evidence in support of the continental drift theory. The fourth evidence is placer deposits. Placer deposits is an accumulation of valuable minerals like gold, diamond, etc. If you look at Ghana, the Ghana coast is rich in placer deposits of gold. Usually gold is extracted from rocks, but here in Ghana, here gold is found in placer deposits and not in rocks, which is kind of an amazing fact. And if you go to Brazil, the same gold placer deposits are available there as well. Therefore, it is obvious that gold deposits of the Ghana are derived from Brazil Plateau when the two continents lay side by side. And this forms another evidence that supports the continental drift theory. The fifth and the last evidence is distribution of fossils. When identical species of plants and animals are found in different landmasses, that provides a strong evidence that everything once upon a time was a single large landmass. Lemur is one such species that is very famous in Madagascar. Now fossils of this species was also found in India. Though it is said that lemurs originated in Africa, linking these three landmasses, you can easily see there is a correlation. Similarly, Mesosaurus is a reptile, it is an extinct species, it is no more available, so skeleton of this reptile has been found in regions of Southern Africa and South America. Again, it is reinforcing the fact that these two continents were once linked together. So these were all the evidence that speaks in favor of the continental drift theory suggested by Alfred Wegener. These are some notable facts and one must broadly remember them in order to understand the origin of continents and oceans and how it led to the adaptation of animal and plant species, which today is the main reason behind diversity of life. If you want to see more of such educational content, make sure you're subscribed. By doing so, you'll get an alert when my next video comes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.